for this precious opportunity to worship God in spirit and in truth. For the Bible is still right that God is spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. God has been a mighty good God and we ought to give him praise and worship this morning for all that he has done. For we are not deserving of his grace. The very nature of grace means it's the favor of God. And God bestowed favor upon us. We did not earn salvation, but God saved us by his grace and by his mercy. It was not that we were so good, but God saved us because he loved us. And for that very fact, I'm grateful to be giving God all the praise and all the honor on this morning. Some people need to understand God uh, does not need your worship. Uh, God is going to be God whether you worship or not. It is our privilege to give God worship. It is I that need to give God worship. It is I that need worship. But God's going to be God whether you worship or not. And it is a privilege to give God worship and praise uh, on this morning. That is, if you know what he's done in your life, and if you are clear about how God has blessed you, and you are clear about the fact that you, uh, at your best, you've come short of the glory of God. If you are clear that you are as short as I am physically, that's how short you are spiritually. Y'all going to help me along in here. Uh, pray all of us short up in this place. And, and because you're short, you need to be clear that God deserves to be praised. He deserves to be given honor because God is such a magnificent God. Every day I wake up, I'm thankful that I'm saved. One of the first things I thank God about is that I'm saved from my sin and that all condemnation has passed. And for that, we are grateful. I'm certainly grateful to be home and grateful to be uh, with you here at the legendary Golden Heights Church of Christ. This is, of course, a legendary congregation because you have a legendary preacher. And we are grateful for uh, Pop and the wonderful work that he does in the kingdom of God and grateful that he has blessed not only my life, he's blessed your life, and he's blessed so many across this country. And, and let it never uh, grow old in this church that you have the greatest gospel preacher in this brotherhood. Pop is a powerful preacher and a pillar uh, among us, and I'm grateful for what he's doing. I am always uh, grateful with what I've learned here. The more I do ministry and the more I operate in a congregation, the more grateful I am for what I've learned uh, because ministry is not easy. Uh, and praise God that all the training that I received here has been a benefit uh, in helping me to, to go as far as I've gone. And so words can never express uh, my full gratitude to Pop for what he's done in my life and what he's continuously doing uh, in my life. I tell you, there's so many things that I can hear him saying while I was here that I did not fully understand. And now that I'm where I am, I'm saying, Lord, have mercy. That man was right. He was right. He was right. He was right 10 times over. And so I'm great because dealing with us ain't easy. Praise God. Uh, Y'all going to help me along in here. Uh, you know, dealing with us ain't easy. Uh, but, but we're grateful to God for what he's done for me. Grateful to have my wife, uh, Sony, with me and uh, our lovely children. Uh, I tell you, my children are just beautiful, and God has blessed me with two gorgeous children, uh, and I'm grateful for both of them. I'm grateful for my wife, and she's just been very helpful uh, to me uh, in my ministry, and I'm grateful for what she's doing, and, uh, we, but we're most grateful that we could come here this week and drop the grandkids off um, to the grandparents. Because we needed to breathe. Because these children will suffocate you. Uh, and this is a new game for us, church. Uh, you know, this is new territory. So we, we're still learning how to navigate uh, having children. And so I've been telling Pop for, uh, I guess, the last few weeks. That, hey, Pop, we're coming to visit. Uh, you know, my ulterior motive was visit to drop off the kids. Uh, but we, and we needed that. And so we're just grateful. Mama has been taking good care of the children and, and uh, they've been, they've been, uh, Nevaeh been sneaking in Pop's room, bothering him all night. So we're just grateful to have an opportunity to breathe because we, we needed it. We, we needed it. These children don't go to sleep. They, they just never sleep. They just, and when one sleep, they don't wake up. And, and you, there's no break, church. Somebody, somebody pray for me. Have me on your mind. Praise. I'm hurting over here. Praise God. Don't you make me start, start crying in a minute. 
so just just pray for us because they they are messy. Nehemiah is a great young man, and and he'll be quoting Acts two before he's five, and so uh, we're, we're looking forward to him being a great uh, great gospel preacher. Let me not hold you long. I want you to turn with me to Acts chapter ten, and I'm going to take a position this morning and prayerfully. Uh, it will be clear and it will be concise, and I hope and pray it will benefit someone here who is. Um, seeking to have a relationship with God. And, and if you are seeking to have a relationship with God, we would ask you to listen attentively. Uh, and we hope and pray that you have an honest heart because the word of God is powerful, but it can't do nothing for you if your heart isn't honest. And so we're asking you this morning to listen attentively uh, as we take a position in Acts chapter 10 and extrapolate from these passages for just a few moments. And we will... Uh, prayerfully be clear and concise. Pop, uh, Pop always said, if you're going to do a sermon, it needs to be powerful, it needs to be plain, and it's got to be persuasive. And we hope and pray it will fit uh, all of the above for just the next few moments. Acts chapter 10, beginning in verse number 44. Acts, the 10th chapter, beginning in verse number 44. And I'll culminate at verse number 48. Your Bible says, while Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God, then answered Peter, can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then prayed them he to tarry certain days. For a few moments I want to impress upon your mind the subject what happened at the house of Cornelius. What happened at the house of Cornelius? I want to explain to all of you under the sound of my voice that the book of Acts is a historical document that indicates the early spread of the church. And I want you to understand that one of the things that the book of Acts demonstrates is that salvation began with the Jews but would eventually include the Gentiles. Uh, this is consistent with the Bible for even in Romans chapter 1 and verse number 16 the Bible says that I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth to the Jew first and also to the Greek. So we find that the gospel would begin with the Jews but would spread uh, to the Gentiles. And I want you to understand in Acts chapter 10 is where we see the inclusion of the Gentiles in that they were granted repentance unto life. Many people today misunderstand Acts the 10th chapter uh, and many people in the religious world do not understand the events in Acts chapter 10. Some people today would suggest that the house of Cornelius was saved when they received the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. There are those today who would suggest that having the outpouring of the Holy Spirit indicated that they were already saved. And there are some who would even suggest that man today can receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit as they did in Acts chapter 10. Well, I have come to take the position that number one, nobody today can receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. They cannot receive it as they did in Acts chapter 2, and they cannot receive it as they did in Acts chapter 10. And what I plan to show you on this morning is that the baptism of the Holy Spirit as it took place in Acts chapter 10 was not designed to save the house of Cornelius. I've come today to tell you that the baptism of the Holy Spirit as it took place in Acts chapter 10 had nothing to do with Cornelius' salvation. But the baptism of the Holy Spirit had to do with convincing the Jews that Gentiles should be accepted into the body of Christ. And I've come to make very clear to you that nobody today can receive it as they did in Acts chapter 10 because Acts 10 was a unique 
circumstance in which God poured out the Holy Spirit as a sign to the Jews that Gentiles ought to be included in the body of Christ. And I have come to tell it to tell you, and I will prove that if a man says that they were saved by Holy Spirit baptism prior to water baptism, by that same argument, I'm going to show you not only would they be saved before baptism, but they would have also been saved before faith. So I'm going to show you that argument doesn't work. People say today water baptism is not essential because in Acts 10 they received the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Well, I'm going to show you by that same argument. If in fact they were saved before water baptism because of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, that would also mean they were saved before they even had faith. Because before this sermon's over, I'm going to show you that the outpouring not only took place before baptism, it took place before they even heard the word of God. So I I've come today to tell you and I will prove this morning that nobody receives the baptism of the Spirit and the purpose of the baptism of the Spirit in Acts 10 was not to save but to confirm that Gentiles would be included. Well, let me get to work in Acts chapter 10 beginning in verse uh, number 1. Keith, if you would, in Acts chapter 10 uh, verse number 1, I could summarize this because in verse 1 through verse number 6, what I want to show you is that Cornelius was a God-fearer. Cornelius prayed always. Cornelius, this Gentile, was obviously religious, but on my way to what I'm going to prove, let me make plain that just because a man is religious does not mean that he's saved. Just because a man is religious, it has no indication that that man is in fellowship with God. While he prayed and while he gave alms and while he was a God-fearer, there is no indication that he was saved because he was religious. But in Acts chapter 10 verse 1 through verse number 6, Cornelius is going to be given instructions that he's to find a man by the name of Simon who's lodging with a Simon who is a tanner down by the seaside. And the reason he's to find that man is because he is going to be told what he's got to do. Now in Acts chapter 10, why don't you read verse 6 for the sake of time. Uh, Acts chapter 10 and verse number 6, what does it say? He lodged with one Simon the Tanner. Now he's telling Cornelius, let me tell you where the man is because you got to find the man. And, because, and the reason you got to find the man is because the man has got to tell you what you've got to do. He said, I want you to find Simon who's lodging with a tannery. Whose house is by the seaside. Whose house is by the seaside. Read. He shall tell thee what thou art. He is going to tell you what you ought to do. Now God is sending Cornelius to find a man by the name of Simon. And the reason he's sending him to Simon is because Simon's got to tell him what he ought to do. So understand when Cornelius is coming to find Simon, he is going there because God has some instructions that he is to receive from a Peter. Now understand while God sends Cornelius to Peter understand God's got to deal with Peter so while Peter is down in Joppa which is 35 miles from Caesarea understand that Peter sees a vision while he's lodging with a tanner. Now what is a tanner? A tanner is one that sees all or that has or deals with all manner of four-footed beasts. A tanner dealt with all kinds of different animals. Peter is lodging with a tanner. Now God uses where he is and shows him a vision and Peter sees all kinds of animals of different kinds of different types all manner of four-footed beasts and God said rise Peter kill and eat and Peter's response is I've never eaten anything unclean or common and God said what I call clean let no man call common what are you doing God I am dealing with Peter's mind because Peter has to go to the Gentiles but Jews have no dealings with Gentiles. In a Jew's mind, a Gentile was completely unclean and unfit to be members of the kingdom of God. Peter is a Jew and he's got to help Peter to understand that you are a Jew and I'm sending you to Gentiles. But first you got to get in your mind, if I clean it up, if I clean it up, don't let anybody call it common. Now, if you're going to ever understand the baptism of the Holy Spirit as in Acts 10, you first got to understand that God is dealing with Jews who don't believe 
Gentiles are to be included in fellowship with his people. Now, give me verse number 28. Give me verse number 28. I want you to see something. In verse number 28, I'm summarizing a lot of this so I can get to my arguments. I want you to understand, he's sending Cornelius to Joppa to meet Peter. While Cornelius' servants are on their way, God shows Peter a vision. Peter was told, when I make clean, let no man call common. Around this time, Gentiles are going to knock on his door. Now watch the discussion in verse number 28. What does the Bible say? And he said unto them. He said unto them what? You know how that it is unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come unto one another nation. Now Peter's talking to, these, to Cornelius and his servants. And he's saying, you know that it is unlawful. What's unlawful for me as a Jew to keep company with Gentiles? Well, watch how God worked on his mind. Read. But God has shown me that I should not call. But God has shown me yeah. that, I, that should I should call. Read. Any man. Any common, man. Common or unclean. God's been dealing with his mind because God's got to send him to the house of Cornelius. What are you doing, God? I'm trying to set up my circumstances, deal with the preacher's mind, send him down to these Gentiles so he will understand that these Gentiles got to be included. Yes, so when you read verse 28, Peter said, I've learned, I, I know now that I'm not to call any man unclean or common. Let's keep reading, read. Therefore came I unto you without gain, saying, Read. As soon as I was sent for, Read. I asked therefore what me, intent ye have sent Now for Peter me. said, Now, I need to know what's your intent for calling me. Yeah. Now God told me, Call no man common or clean, but what's your intent for calling me? Why am I here? Now watch Cornelius rehearse the matter. Read. And Cornelius said, Cornelius said what? Four days ago I was fasting until this hour. Go ahead and read. And at the ninth hour, read. I prayed in my house, and behold, a man stood before me in bright clothing. Go ahead and read. And said, Cornelius, Cornelius. thy prayer is heard. That prayer is heard. Well, let me deal with that prayer is heard. I skipped over it, but I might as well say a word about it while I'm in the neighborhood. Thy prayers and thy arms have come up as a memorial. Uh, in the King James, we have memorial, and then it's translated later in the same chapter as remembrance. In other words, the word rem memorial means a reminder. Now, let me help you out with this. Let me be very clear that this is not a proof text for God hearing a sinner's prayer. The reason it's not a proof text for God hearing a sinner's prayer is because other passages in the same Bible make clear that God does not hear a sinner's prayer. So how does this prayer function in Acts chapter 10? Well, his prayers and his arms came up for God as a reminder. Well, what is the reminder? Well, it reminded God metaphorically that he had a plan from the foundation of the world that Jew and Gentile would come into the same body. So when you see the prayers and the arms coming up with, as a memorial, it doesn't mean God is answering his request. It means God is seeing Cornelius' prayers as a reminder of what he was already going to do before the foundation of the world. So understand that this passage does not teach. We, as a matter of fact, we don't know what Cornelius was praying to say that God answered a request. Secondly, I don't believe he was praying about salvation. He was already a God-fearer. He was already a religious man. So there's no indication that he's praying about being saved. And then thirdly, I don't believe he was praying about Gentile salvation because it was a mystery kept secret before the foundation of the world. So I just don't believe that we have any indication that God was answering uh, Cornelius' request because we don't know what he requested. This was a mystery before the foundation of the world and he prayed all the time and he did it because he was already religious so God answers this prayer not in the sense of a request but the prayers come up as a memorial a reminder of what God was going to already do so so I mean, John 9 31 is still good and we know that God heareth not there's some folk want to take that verse from us now and we know that God heareth not sinners and, and we know so some things we know some things we just don't have to question and we know god heareth not sinners so what do we have in Acts sin we have a unique circumstance where god is receiving the prayers and the alms as a reminder 
of what he was going to ever to do before the foundation of the world. Now keep reading, Keith. What else does the Bible say here? Send therefore to Joppa. Send to Joppa. And call hither Simon. Call hither Simon. Whose surname is Peter. Whose surname is Peter. He is lodged in the house one Simon, a tanner by the seaside. Go ahead and read. Who when he cometh shall speak unto thee. Go ahead now drop down to verse 33. 33 says what? Immediately, immediately, therefore I sent to thee. Now watch this text. He says immediately I sent. Read. To thee, and thou hast well done, thou art come. Read. Now therefore are we here present before God. He says God. therefore are we here present. Now watch why he's there. Read. To hear all things. I, I'm here to hear all things. That are commanded thee of God. Now here's what Cornelius is looking for. He's looking for what is commanded. God said, go to Simon. He's going to tell you what you must do. Verse 33, Cornelius said, we are here to hear all things that are commanded. What are you here for, Cornelius? I want to know what's commanded by God. God sent me here to find out what I must do. Cornelius is not looking for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And the outpouring of the Holy Spirit is not going to negate that he's got to obey what Simon tells him to do. It will not negate that he's got to obey what's commanded. So he said the reason that we came, the reason we're here, the reason we are gathered. Cornelius said God sent me here to hear what is commanded. Because that's the thing that's going to save Cornelius. Now, I'll be back on it. Now, watch what happens in the interim. Go ahead and read. Verse 34. Then Peter opened his mouth and said. What did he say? Of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of uh, persons. Yeah, I think Peter got it now. I think Peter got it now. I think Peter got it. Because God told him what I call clean. Let no, don't you call unclean. And now Peter starts his sermon. He said, I have perceived that God is no respecter of person. What do you learn, Peter? That God wants to save people of other ethnicities go ahead and read but in every nation he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted it, with it, it him. doesn't matter whether you're jew it doesn't matter whether you're gentile it doesn't matter what your ethnicity is god wants to save all men that work righteousness and god is no respecter of person now that's what god is trying to get across what do they got to do? If they want to be saved, they got to work righteousness. If they want to be saved, they got to do whatever Peter tell them to do. Because they were gathered to hear all things that were commanded. God said, find Simon, and Simon will tell you what you ought to do. So what's going to save them? What they got to do? What do they have to do? Whatever's commanded. And when they do what's commanded, they would have worked righteousness. Do y'all see that? How do you work righteousness? By doing what's commanded. What's commanded? Whatever Peter's going to tell them to do. When they do that, that's going to be the thing that saves them. Now, drop down to 44. Drop down to verse 44. Now, let's understand this outpouring. Well, before, I, before you read it, here's what I know. The outpouring, whatever it's going to do, is not going to save it. Whatever it's going to do, it's not going to negate that he's got to keep the commandments. Whatever it's going to do, it's not going to change that in order for them to be accepted, Peter said, you got to work righteousness. So that cannot be negated. Whatever the outpouring does, I know what it doesn't do. It doesn't make a man righteous. It does not negate God's commandments and a man still got to do whatever the apostles reveal. Now, 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 verse 44 says what? While Peter yet spake these While words. Peter yet spake these words. The Holy Ghost fell on all of them who heard the word. Go ahead and read. And they were of the circumcision which believed. Oh, yeah, this is good. Now, now, they, now, here's who it affects. They of the circumcision, the Jews, were astonished. Yes, sir. When they saw that God poured out the Spirit on unclean unsaved nasty gentiles All right. and the jews were astonished that god will outpour the holy spirit like he did on pentecost on these unclean men yeah, yeah. Well, well, go ahead and read go ahead and read i'm getting ahead of myself it's getting as good many to me as came with peter yeah because the because that of the gentiles also was poured out the gift of the holy ghost that's what got them astonished Watch this. Read. 
For they heard them speak with tongues. Read. And magnified God. Read. Then answered Peter. Then answered Peter. Can any man forbid water? Now. Okay. When Peter poses the question, he poses the question not to Cornelius. He's talking to the Jews. Yes, sir. And he's asking the Jews, now based on what you just saw, based on this outpouring, can you now forbid water to these Gentiles? Question. Why do they want to forbid water? The word forbid indicates that they were not going to or were even willing to baptize Gentiles. What do they know about baptism that would make them want to forbid baptism to Gentiles? They heard on Jerusalem that baptism was for the remission of sins in the name of Jesus. That would put them in fellowship with God and with the people. So to prevent Gentiles from being in fellowship, Jews would forbid water baptism because they understood what baptism did. That's the only reason they want to forbid. You don't forbid something that's not essential. The reason they're forbidding it is because they know it is essential. That, and because they know it is essential, they know that's the way a man gets in fellowship with God and with God's people. And they said they for, or rather, they would forbid water baptism. But then he says, but based on what you just saw, based on this outpouring, can any man forbid or neglect or stop these men from being immersed in water? Well, why do you want to forbid it? Because we know that baptism is the door into the Lord's church. Now, watch this. Keep reading. That these should be ba not be baptized. Yeah, read. Which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we. Let me help you. They have received the outpouring, which I believe is different from the indwelling. One deals with power. The other one deals with God taking up residence in those that are saved. What we don't see in Acts 10 is indwelling. We see power. And having the power was not the thing that saved. Because the, what saved the man is when he received the gift of the Holy Spirit in terms of the indwelling. What we see here is an outpouring. And there's a difference between the outpouring and the indwelling. Now he says, can, and, and praise God. If they were already saved, why do you have to baptize them? The Jews know baptism is for remission of sins. Peter knows baptism is for remission of sins. Well, how did Peter know? He preached it on Pentecost. It seems he would know if they were already saved. And if Peter believed they were already saved, why would Peter baptize them if the Holy Spirit saved them prior to baptism? Watch this. Verse 48 says what? And he commanded them to be baptized uh, in the hold name. Tight. Oh, right, hold tight. Read verse 33. Read 33. Immediately, therefore I sent to thee, and thou hast well done that thou art come. Now therefore are we all here present before God to hear all things that are commanded thee of God. What does he want to hear? All things the that are commanded. What does he want to hear? All things that are commanded. Read verse 48. And he commanded them to be oh, baptized. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> He's there to hear all things which are commanded. And at the end of this chapter, the one thing Peter told him, and he commanded. That's why he had to see Simon. Simon's got to tell him what's commanded. And the thing commanded at his culmination was baptism in the name of Jesus, which was for the remission of sins. That's what Peter preached in Acts 2. That's what baptism in the name of Jesus is for in Acts 10, which means in spite of the outpouring, they still was not saved until they were baptized for the remission of sins. Yes, sir. 
Now let me ice this cake a little more. Let me just, the outpouring don't save a man. That ain't what do it. Water baptism is what does it. Command it in the name of Jesus. In the name, baptism in the name of Jesus for remission of sins. Now, I want to show you something and this lesson is yours. There is a difference between Acts 10 and Acts 11. In Acts 11, Peter is going to put the events in order. Acts 10 is the facts. Acts 11 is the facts in order. Get me 11. Chapter 11. Let me just ice the cake. I'm going to show you that it was, it was not the Holy Spirit baptism that saved. It was their obedience to the word culminating in baptism that saved. And all the baptism of the Holy Spirit did in Acts 10 was confirm that Gentiles ought to be accepted. And I thank God for that because we Gentiles praise the mighty name of Jesus. That, that's our text. That is where the door opened for you and me. It's in Acts chapter 11 and Acts chapter 10. That's our, that's our shout text. Because prior to that, it was limited to the Jewish ethnicity until God showed that Gentiles should be accepted. Now, watch chapter 11 verse quick, very quickly. Go ahead and read. And the apostles and brethren that were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also received the word of God. Go ahead and read. And when Peter was come up to Jerusalem, they that were of the circumcision contended with him. Yeah, they started arguing with Peter, saying, Peter, what did you do? Read. Saying, thou wentest into men uncircumcised. You went into men uncircumcised. And eat with them. And you ate with them. Read. But Peter rehearsed the, the matter before. Peter him. Well, I know it's getting good to you, Keith. Slow down, man. But it, it's good preaching. I know it's good. Uh, verse, Peter rehearsed, rehearsed the matter from the beginning. He rehearsed the matter from the beginning. Read. And expounded it by order unto them, saying. By order. Order. Here's what happened first. Here's what happened second. Here's what happened third. Here, order. Are y'all seeing that? Not now, I'm going to show you something in this text. I told you in the beginning of my sermon. What I plan to show you is this. That they were saved by water baptism. Yes, but there's some people that say because they had the baptism of the spirit before water baptism. It indicates water baptism is not essential because the outpouring took place first. Yes, sir. Now I'm going to show you if that's true. Then that also means they were saved before they ever had faith. Because the outpouring took place before they heard the word of God. Now watch this. Uh, go ahead and read. I was in the city of Joppa praying. Read. And in the trance I saw a vision. Well, now, 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 now. Here's Peter rehearsing the matter. Now drop down to verse number 14. Verse 14. Who shall tell thee words, whereby thou and all thy house shall be saved. Now here's what happens. Peter's rehearsing it. Then Peter rehearses Cornelius' part. And here's what God told Cornelius in verse 14. He said, the thing that's going to save you is the words that Peter speaks. Now, God told Cornelius that. God said, Cornelius, here's what's going to save you. Words. If the Holy Spirit baptism saved, then God didn't know what he was talking about. Because God's the one who told Cornelius, it will be words that are going to save you. God's the one who said, go to Joppa, find Simon, and he's going to tell you what to do. God said it will not be the outpouring, but it will be the word of God that's going to save Cornelius. Yes, now, if the Holy Spirit baptism saved them, church, then God didn't know what he was talking about, or, or God didn't know his own plan, or God changed his mind. None of, those, none of the above took place. God saved Cornelius exactly how he said he was going to be saved by words God said it to Cornelius if that didn't happen then God didn't tell the truth God said words going to save him now watch this go ahead and read verse 15 as I began to speak that's what I'm looking for the Holy Ghost whoa, whoa, whoa. Peter's going to give it to y'all in order as I Began to speak. What happened? The Holy Ghost fell on them. Now, as yeah. I began to speak, yeah. the Holy Ghost fell. Yeah. Now, that means they have not yet heard the gospel. Because faith comes by hearing, and hearing by but they ain't heard the word yet as I began to speak. Yes, sir. The Holy Spirit fell. Now, 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 church, 
if they haven't yet heard the gospel, they don't have saving faith. Because faith come by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. So if the Holy Spirit baptism indicates they were saved before water baptism, then the Holy Spirit baptism also says they were saved before faith because the Holy Spirit baptism took place before either one of those took place. It took place before they had faith and it took place before they was baptized in water. So to negate water baptism is to negate faith because the Spirit fell before they had faith or before they was baptized. So to eliminate one is to eliminate the other one. As I began to speak, read. The Holy Ghost fell on them read. as on us at the beginning. Peter said, here's what happened here. Exactly what took place at the beginning. The beginning would, be go, would go back to Pentecost. On Pentecost, what happened? The Spirit fell on the apostles without medium. It fell. And he says, the Spirit just fell on us, on them, as on us at the beginning. Read. Then remembered I the word of the Lord. Read. How that he said. He said what? John indeed baptized with water. Well, John indeed baptized with but water. But he shall be baptized but with. But he shall be baptized with. The Holy Ghost. With the Holy Ghost. For Read. as much then as God gave them the like gift. Watch this, watch this, watch this. As much then as God gave them the like gift. Read. As he did unto us. As he did unto us. Who believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. Watch Peter read. What was I? What was I that I could withstand God? Peter said, I had no choice but to baptize. Based on what happened in that outpouring, to negate baptism would be to deny what we just witnessed. And so Peter said, who was I that I could withstand God? Read it. When they heard these, when they things, heard these things, they held their they peace. Held their peace and glorified God. Glorified saying, God saying, Then hath God then also, hath God God also granted unto repentance life. unto life. The proof that God was accepting Gentiles was the outpouring of the Spirit. Yes, sir. But the outpouring only indicated that God granted. God was giving the opportunity. For Gentiles to be saved. But the outpouring was not the means by which they were saved. The outpouring was for the benefit of the Jews, not the Gentiles. The Gentiles had to obey the gospel. The Jews didn't want to accept them. So God outpoured the Holy Spirit. And Peter said, who is I that I could withstand God? So understand church, when you read Acts 10 and Acts 11. What you see is God granting repentance unto life to the Gentiles but they don't get it if they don't get baptized in water for the remission of sins they get saved the exact same way as the Jews only difference is the Jews needed a sign that would prove God was granting access and I'm so glad Acts 10 is in the Bible because that's my salvation I'm so glad Acts 11 is in the Bible because that's my salvation I'm glad today that God is a you also God. I'm glad that he doesn't exclude me but includes me as long as I obey the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I've come today to tell you ain't a man alive today that has the baptism of the spirit like they got in Acts 10. Nobody. Because that was a unique circumstance in granting access to Gentiles. But even the Gentiles had to be baptized. And don't you let nobody forbid water for your salvation and I, I don't have time but I know some folk even in the Lord's church that will forbid water depending on what your past is but I've come today to tell you no man can forbid water because God has granted and what God has granted can't nobody take away and so I've come today to tell you you need to be baptized this morning in water I don't have time to do much with baptism except to tell you that no man can be baptized or rather no man can be saved before he is baptized. I I've come today to tell you no man today can get around the water that's in the plan of salvation. It was put in the water back in the great commission. Jesus said he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. It was put in the plan in Acts chapter 2. Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. It's clearly in the plan in Acts 22 16. Vitarius thou arise 
baptized and be baptized and wash away thy sins calling on the name of the Lord clearly in the plan in Romans chapter 6 and verse number 3 know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Christ were baptized into his death clearly in the plan in Galatians chapter 3 26 and 27 for as many as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ clearly in the plan in 1 Peter 3 20 and 21 baptism that also now save us I've come today to tell you there's no way to get the water out of the plan God has worked too hard to bring me salvation and I've if I had time I'll tell you that because he rose from the dead and said all power is given in my hand to deny baptism is to deny his authority in Acts chapter 2 verse 38 baptism in it is, is in his name to deny baptism is to deny his authority I've come today to tell you baptism is for the washing away of sin to deny baptism you don't get the washing away of sin in 1st Peter 3 baptism is connected to salvation to deny baptism is to deny salvation baptism is essential for reconciliation to deny baptism a man can't be reconciled there's no way to get around the plan of salvation I've come today to tell you that I know that folk don't want to preach this like they used to preach it but I've come today to tell you we ain't got no choice but to stand on the one Lord one faith and one baptism we don't have no choice but to spread this unadulterated gospel of Jesus Christ no time to be cute no time to be all just no time to get all sophisticated no time to be a sociologist no time to be a psychologist somebody got to tell somebody that I suffer not a woman to teach nor to usurp authority over the man somebody got to tell somebody that there's only one baptism that a man must receive if he want to be saved somebody got to tell somebody that there's only one body in which a man is saved somebody got to tell somebody that in order to reach the blood you don't get the blood unless you touch baptism somebody need to tell somebody that there's only five acts of worship that a man must engage in somebody need to tell somebody that Jesus said I'm the way the truth and the life no man come to the father except by me I've come today to tell you there's absolutely no way around God's plan of salvation and while it may sound old this old message still saves man today it still saves man today I said it still saves man today it still saves man and it'll save you today you know why it'll save you today because God has granted Oh, it's been granted, church. This thing been granted. This thing been granted. And if you're here right now today, you need to take advantage of what's been granted. You need to take advantage of what's been granted because to deny this gift, I've come today to tell you one day you got to stand before God. And I've come today to tell you it's, it's unpopular to preach this message. But I've come today to tell you I don't know nothing else that'll grow a church. I don't know anything else that a man's got to hear that'll save his soul. And when a man says that the gospel is obsolete, he is saying salvation is obsolete. And you can't save a man and not preach this message. You've got to preach the gospel. And it's the only thing that works. And there's so many young preachers today who are losing sight of what works. I said it works, church. And many young preachers today, well, that's old stuff. And you get castigated and made fun of because you're preaching old stuff. In the meantime, while this old stuff being preached, folks spit in the water. So accuse me of teaching old stuff. But this old stuff works. And that's why you need, you need, pray, I don't know why I'm off but you need a mentor to teach you the ropes on how to preach the gospel. It's a sad thing when a man gets in the pulpit but doesn't know how to preach the gospel. Sad day when a man preaches what he cannot even defend. Sad day when he got to call somebody else to defend somebody that's challenging him in his own city. Sad day. I've come today to tell you that this is the message that works. And I thank God that I was taught how to preach the gospel. I ain't praise God this. And as I close, I tell you, some folk, they look at Pop, they, they want to dress like him. They want, they want to look cool like him. But praise God, I'm glad I wanted to know how to preach like him. Praise God, I want to know how to preach like him. Some preachers more, want more glamour. Then they want to work and learn.
how to preach the gospel. They forgot what this thing is about. They don't remember there was a day when Pop was eating chicken and preaching the gospel. When he slept in a car and didn't have no place to stay but preach the gospel anyhow. Nobody knows that part about Pop. They see the glamour, but they don't understand that he paid his dues. Preach the gospel. And what we need to imitate is the preaching of the gospel. That's what affected me. And that teaching has blessed my life. And I've come today to tell you somebody in this place right now needs to take advantage of the grant. What did God do? He granted repentance unto life. Now, if you're here right now, here's what we know. You might be visiting us and you're saying, I'm, I'm, I'm ready, preacher. Well, if you're ready, we want you to come on and be baptized. That's what we want you to do. And you don't even have to wait for me to stop preaching. You just start walking forward and say, I, I'm not going to forbid water. It's time for me to go and get on the wind water and get the remission of my sins. It's time for me to get in the water so that I can be saved. We want you to do that right now because God has granted it. That's what he's done. And if you're here today, I want you to understand, don't you be tarrying for the Holy Ghost. Right now, the Holy Ghost is waiting for you. Yeah, you don't have to wait for the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost waiting for you now because the Holy Ghost did his part. The Holy Ghost has now indicated salvation is granted and the Holy Spirit has revealed the word of God. Now your is in your court now. Now you got to obey what the Holy Spirit has revealed. And he revealed that water's in the plan. And I'm, I'm, I'm waiting here for you. I want you to come on and come down these aisles. I don't know why you're here, why you came, but I tell you what, that you have a grant right now today waiting on you. Praise God, yeah, when you go to college, I wanted to, God bless you, come on. God bless you, come on. God bless you, come on. Come on, take advantage of this grant. When you go to college, boy, you, 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 you quick to take advantage of a grant. Y'all know what a grant is, don't you? When they give you some free money, well, God has given a free gospel in that it doesn't cost you anything. Now it costs Christ something. Christ paid the price. Now all you got to do is take advantage of the grant. If you're here right now today, I want you to take advantage of this grant. This grant's waiting on you. And if you are a member of the body of Christ, know today and digest what you already know. These arguments, nobody, nobody today gets the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. The purpose was to invite, not to save. It was an invitation, but it was not the means by which man was saved. So I want you to come today and be saved. You've heard that Jesus died, was buried, and resurrected. Jesus, Jesus died for your sins. You don't know nobody else who loved you that much. That while you was yet a sinner, Christ died for you. And then not only that, praise God, he loves you so much. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. You don't know anybody that loves you like that. Now the question is, will you obey? Will you repent of your sins? Acts 3.19, repent and be converted that your sins might be blotted out. Make the great confession, I believe Jesus Christ, the Son of God, and then be immersed in water for the remission of sins. Well, water don't do nothing, preacher. Ain't nothing in the water. I never said something was in there. I never said nothing was in there, but you got to get in there. Because man does not receive the benefits of the blood of Jesus if he does not get in the water. He's got to get in the water because water is a condition. Naaman had to dip seven times. Wasn't nothing in that water. But it was a condition that a man had to meet if he planted to get his leprosy healed. And God can set the condition. Just be glad he didn't say gasoline. Praise God. Whatever God said, that's what we would have had to do. And God put water in the plan and I want you to come and be baptized. Why don't we all stand together right now? Because we're now going to, I want somebody to take advantage of the grant. We want somebody to take advantage of the grant. It's been granted, church. It's been granted. It's been granted. Now the question is, will you come forward and say yes to Jesus? We're going to sing this verse of a song. And as we're singing this verse, this is our way of saying, come on, come on, come on. God bless you. Come on. Come on and be immersed this morning in water for the remission of your sins. Come on. Come on and say yes. Come on. God bless you. Do you want to be baptized for the remission of your sins? Is there one that's ready to say yes? Come on and say yes. Come on, say yes. God is waiting on you. It's been granted. It's been granted. 
I said it's been granted. Are you washed? Washed in the blood of the Lamb. Come on and say yes. By the Savior. Come on, come on. Come on and get immersed in water. You can sit right here on the front pew. Come on. We want you to get baptized right now. Right now today. Can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized? Come on and say yes. Are you washed? In the blood. Come on and say yes to Jesus. In the soul cleansing. Are you white? Are you washed? I want to give you one more opportunity. I don't know where you are. You may be saying there's too many folk in here. And to walk down those aisles, there's too many folk looking at me. Let me tell you something. We are your biggest cheerleaders right now. You want to see a church erupt with gladness? You walk down these aisles and say yes to Jesus. See, we, we're here. We're on your side because there was a day when we had to walk down these aisles. And let me tell you a secret. We still struggle with sin. The difference is we got an advocate with the Father. We got somebody who can plead our case. And you need to get Jesus in your life. So when you fall down, you got a lawyer that can plead your case. But you don't have that lawyer until you come on and say yes to him. We, want you. we don't want you to wait one more minute. We don't want you to play with death. Death can be on the other side of these doors. Death can, be, death can be in the next street. And you got to have Christ in your life so you can say, death, where is your sting? Yeah. Yeah. And oh, grave, where is your victory? We're going to sing one more verse. And as we sing this verse, this is our way of asking you, begging you to come and accept Jesus Christ before it is everlastingly too late. Come on. Come on. Is there one more? Come on. God bless you. Come on. God bless you, come on. God bless you, come on. God bless you, come on. God bless you. He's waiting for you. Come on and get the grant. Salvation is offered. Will you take advantage of it? 